Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to TEC the movie. Now I know, yes, it's been a few weeks and we haven't really uploaded and I, that comes down to two words really. And the two magic words that I will use every single time to upload when I'm done. I am busy. Actually, that's three words. I, I just, I'm busy. Okay. Apostrophe that. I'm busy is the magic words. But we are here eventually um, with our final three games of the season. Um, we are currently, I believe, four and one. Yeah, because we're coming off the win of Namdu. So we're four and one right now, heading into week five, week six against Jokinator. And this is going to be quite a long one. So go ahead and grab your popcorn. Um, sit down, grab a drink, uh, put this on like if you're at work or something, not like out loud, uh, if you have played it out loud, hi everybody, uh, but ideally you're listening to this in your earphones, um, so yeah, that's, I don't know what I'm talking about now, anyway, uh, our first matchup is against Yook, who is, I believe at this point in time, in the top four, he's pretty much been top four the entire season, um, and this is our matchup here, as you can see, this is actually the first week, uh, the last video, and my last I Lied edition. This is the fourth, uh, or the first week we have um, the GOAT, what is this guy called? Chad Todd. Chad Todd, I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, and so, this is a pretty interesting game. So going into prep for this one, um, it kind of sucks for me, uh, for a few reasons. Um, number one, we can't really switch into a lot. So we can't really switch into Rillaboom. Uh, we don't have a Rillaboom switch in. Um, we don't have a, mo uh, we don't have a, uh, what do you call it? Mega Metachamp switch in. We don't, yeah, we don't have, th those two are the main ones. And we don't, oh, actually I lied. Stack Attack, we don't have a Stack Attack switch in. Additionally, we, we have a Spectre switch in and we have Hoopa. So Spectre is actually, it's still a massive problem, but it's actually not the biggest threat this week. The biggest threat this week is actually the um, Stack Attack. And so the more I'm prepping for this game, the more it's kind of like, this is kind of lost. I need Yook to choke, and Yook is probably one of, if not the best battlers. He's definitely top four. If, if I had to pick the top four in the league, it's like, you know, Prison Mav, uh, or in JK, Yook. That's five. They're definitely the top five. Um, and so, and Yook specifically doesn't really make too many mistakes, mista mistakes uh, when playing. So uh, I'm kind of needing to hope for him to choke. Because the problem is, and you're going to see this throughout all three of these battles today, and it's actually pretty good. So if you're if you're in Honage, this is pretty cool, because you're going to get to see a lot of different ways you can go around dealing with this issue, and that issue being not being able to switch into something. So when you're unable to switch into something, there are generally two trains of thought. Either A, consolidate your defense, um, that meaning find one thing that can kind of do that job and find a set of that mon or whatever you need to do to make sure that one mon that you have a hard time switching into has a dedicated um not even answer has a dedicated way to uh check that mon not even counter just check it um because a lot of times you won't be able to counter the mon if you can't counter it you're gonna have to check it uh, and so you can check it defensively by consolidating your defense or you can just build your team in a way where you don't really need to switch out um which is obviously almost always impossible. Almost always your six mons aren't going to be able to not switch, uh, not going to be able to need to switch out because eventually what they do that, you're kind of over prepping for that one mon and then you're kind of weak to other things. So it, it's a tough balancing act. And this happens throughout all three games. You'll see, you'll see in a second. Um, so this one, obviously we have a few issues. Number one, we can't switch into Rillaboom. Number two, we can't switch into... Um, this guy, and number three, we can't switch into Medicham. And so there are three guys, at the very least, that I have a hard time switching into. Um, and then Spectre is Spectre, so that can always just sweep you late game. You gotta be worried about that. Um, and so, when you're prepping, um, I think people identify prep and play as, like, two different things. Like, if you're a good prepper, you can suck at playing, and then if you're, like, if you suck at prep, you can just be goaded at playing. And unless you're prison, that doesn't work, um, because the the I, the deal with with prep is that you're always prepping in a way that it you're always looking for um, a proper sequence when you're prepping, and that's just that's just 
the case of ever everything. When you're prepping for a match, you're looking for a way for that set to work. You can't just make a set that 6 your opponent, but then you can't figure out a way to get it in or get it set up or whatever. It doesn't work that way. So your prep and your play is like always intertwined. Uh, and so looking at this, I'm, I'm, I've, I faced a couple matchups that I thought were unwinnable. Actually, the only two that I thought were unwinnable, it was Amarillo and this one. And Amarillo, in that one, I could at least think of a sequence in which I could win. In this one, I can't think of a sequence in which I win in my prep. I just can't think of an order in which I would win unless he chokes really badly or he lets me do something that he shouldn't let me do. And so, um, we can go ahead and look at this here. Uh, week 6 versus Yuk. Oh my god. See, I hate that I can't pause and then it's kind of annoying. Anyway, these are the 6 I have opted to bring. Um, I'm bringing Regigigas because there's a spec here on the other side of the screen. Um, spec is really, really strong. Body Press, Lariat, um, Earth Power, Toxic. Very simple set. Um, it's pretty much here to dedicate itself to checking the Spectre. Um, even Burn, Lariat can break sub before a slow start, so it's it's kind of... It's, it's a check, but also, like, if you sub protect Willow, it's really annoying. That's one of the good things about Spec, is it can sometimes just beat its counters, unless it's really good. Lumberry is, I think, for Burn. Also, actually, I think it's for... Um, I mean, obviously it helps with burn, but also if Umbreon comes, I can toxic it, and ideally I don't, I don't get toxic back. Uh, so it's Spadef here. It's Chinese. Um, next is Crobat. This is the closest thing we have to Rillaboom switch in. Uh, the speed outspeeds Rillaboom, which means I can always bring this in true, and I can always roost, which is good, uh, but it also sucks because if that's the case, I always need to click roost. And eventually that just gives him, or that just literally does give him free momentum. But it's the closest thing we got. I have helmet because I'm going to get knocked off anyway. I thought about boots, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going to get knocked. And I might as well get my 3% chip that gets healed up by terrain. Uh, next is Mega Blastoise with Dark Pulse, Aura Sphere, Water Pulse, Flip Turn. And as much as I hate this mon, I've brought it literally, you're going to see, I've brought it literally every single game that I've had access to it. So maybe I don't hate this mon as much as I think I hate it. Uh, very basic set. Madomatis, you know, max. I thought about running Terrain Pulse, but also there's no guarantee that Terrain will be up and it doesn't do anything for me. Um, like, Dark Pulse will handle... Dark Pulse and Aurasphere handle everything better than Terrain Pulse could, and Terrain Pulse is inconsistent. Next we have Thraki, because I really want Thraki to work. Uh, if you guys saw, I brought it last week against Namdu, and it sucked because it got in my way. However, this time I have Banded. This is pretty good, actually, as it allows me to revenge kill a few things. Um, namely, the Metacham and the... Uh, what do you call that? Metacham, the other guy. Spectrier. Uh, along with Low Kick being able to Oko stack attack. However, that just is contingent on him not switching. Uh, defensively, it also is really good. Or offensively, it's really good against the, his defensive core. U-turn's obviously great for momentum. Um, next, we have Physically Defensive Victini, which is are the closest thing we got to a... Um, Metacham switch in. So as you can see here, the way I've opted to deal with Metacham and uh, what do you call Rillaboom is to have these two guys just dedicated themselves to switching in, um, which may or not may not be the right play. But then again, I also can't switch out of anything. So that you can see, yeah, the only thing that um, can't that needs to switch out of the stack attacker is this guy. Everything else can take on stack attacker, one v one at least. This is up this guy. This does like 60% or something. And then we have Assault Vest Hoopa to assist in a Spectriar issue uh, with obviously Hyperspace Fury being able to go through um, the, what do you call, go through uh, Substitute. Um, I believe, uh, yeah, I have Dream Punch Focus Blast here. I think I got made fun of for this set, and I'm not sure why. Actually, I do know why, because Umbreon didn't come. But if whether, if, if it was Fizdef Umbreon, Focus Blast would have 2 a KO'd, and if it was Spadef Umbreon, Drain Punch with a 2 KO'd. And so that was just the, the thought process into that. And I only needed these two moves, really. And one fighting coverage move. Um, but yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the game, which should be this one. And it is. So, uh, why does that look ugly? Maybe if I just... Aha. It was too big. Alright. So, um, as you can see... Everything we thought comes, actually everything I thought comes except the Spectrier, 
which is a good play by Yoke. So this is a good, I don't know if this is intentional or not, or you just figured, oh, there's a stack attack on the other, or there's a Regigigas on the other side, I don't need it, or it's not going to do anything. But me needing to deal with Spectre so heavily with two Mons really kind of being focused on dealing with Spectre and then him not bringing it is big brain because now I have just two guys that are like not optimized against this team. Like right now, Regigigas, like I gotta find something for Regigigas to do, right? Like it's it's a problem. Like I, I don't know what I'm supposed to make it do. Hoopa's still good because it's Hoopa, but like additionally, I only can touch kind of three of his guys, and then Klefki can't thunder wave me because I'm Dark type thankfully, but it like lets him get screens, and that could be bad. So, um, so yeah, that was a good bring by him. So that's a good way to Yoke deals with that pretty well. Um, Abusing the fact that I don't really have don't really have enough defensive uh, ability to, to take care of all his threats But we do see that trick room and stack attack and now the stack attack for ban stack attack of calcs um, This is another issue because you can Make nothing need to switch out but in stack attackers case if it's like max addy band nothing can stay in Nothing stays in or can switch out at all I need to keep my slice at full pretty much the whole game or not let trick room get up and so I'm not, I'm not very, I'm very not happy going into this game. I lead Metacham, or I lead Victini on Metacham, predicting Metacham lead. He fakes out, I protect, obviously. I uh, go ahead and U-turn out on the Slow King. I'm just kidding, I will the wisp because I think he's a bad player. I should have U-turned out there. I U-turn now uh, and take a million for Rocky Helmet, meaning I no longer can switch into Metacham. <laughs> uh, and I bring Hoopa and Bound on the Teleport as now Metacham's back in. I bring in Victini because if he fakes out, then I can switch into Metacham. And so now I'm here, I'm clear I'm clear to click U-turn again. Uh, even though Stoic comes in, I just get chipped down. I should have hard switched there. Stoic comes in because I don't want to let this get um, Trick Room up. I got to go on slow. And Rillaboom comes in on the Dark Pulse. And he reveals that he's not Grassy Glide, or he's not Grassy Terrain at least, uh, because he forgot it. So good thing I didn't bring Terrain Pulse, because he would have been instrumental in helping me set it up he u-turns so that means really moves down to 50 without its priority move which is really really good for me heliolis comes out here um and because i don't have my guard chomp this is just a free bolt switch every single time it comes in uh which is really bad for me because then it just allows in metacham or stack attack which are both really bad for me to deal with so volt comes out here on regigigas and metacham comes in here uh there's really nothing for me to do here i go into crobat here predicting i believe a fake out or Drain Punch, just to get a little bit of chip on it and force it out with U-Turn. Actually, I go, I don't have U-Turn. I double into Blastoise as his stack goes in. Yeah, 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 okay, good play by me. Uh, yeah, so I go into Blast on the stack attack here because I don't have U-Turn, so I have to make the double. I go in and I believe I have Water Pulse. I should have Dark Pulse here, or Sphere, um, which lets Rilla Boom live, but also Rilla Boom is kind of trolling this game. He knocks off my helmet and it kills Rillaboom, but now Crobat's in and that just gives him a free in to stack attack to take his kill. Crobat's actually still pretty good this game as long as I can keep it, uh, as long as I can get rid of this thing. He puts a rocks with stack attack, revealing that he's not banded, which is pretty good for me. Now I have a little bit more room to deal with this thing. King comes in here and because I'm not boots, I'm leftovers on this this guy here. Victini's kind of like the worst one ever at this point in the game. I bring in Hoopa because again I can't let this thing get Trick Room up. If it does have Trick Room, I would just lose Stack Attack outright. Klefki comes in here because it hardwalls Hoopa, and I miss my Focus Blast, which I don't know if that comes into play later. I think it does, but I don't. I don't really know. Um, Metacham comes in here on the Focus Blast. If I was the best player in the world right here and I made that read and I clicked Hyper Space Fury, I won. Uh, but I'm not the best player in the world. Instead, I hit Focus Blast to do 31%. I sack Victini here because it's doing literally nothing the rest of the game, and give him free health. Um, oh, and give him free health. So, not great, not great. Uh, I'm still not in a horrible position, but also I'm not in a good position either because Heliolisk is actually a massive problem. I bring in Thwacky because it'll um, revenge this thing. Um, and so he goes in a stack attack. If I make a read and low kick here, I also win um, because he can't really deal with Hoopa plus Thwacky without this, with this guy. Or he can't really deal with... Um, it's just really good. Okay, actually, I'll, I'll explain what I'm thinking. If Stack Attacker dies here, um, it means Crobat is in a much better spot. I know rocks are up, but as long as Crobat comes in, like, I don't know, dude, on, like, the Klefki, I can boost up, I can potentially get rid of rocks, and then uh, Crobat will outspeed Metacham. 
And so I have one more thing that I'll spend a champ. Because if this dies, uh, if Kobat dies, I um, pretty much lose my stack, my meta champ, so it has to be Thwacky. So obviously Zagataka dying, because it's the biggest threat, is big. Instead I Grassy Glide and do 5% to it, as he's going to recover up with my terrain. I go into Gigas here, because it's kind of the only thing that can take on this guy. I'm just pretty much sacking him at this point, but he Stone Edges here instead of Heavy Slams. Or Gyro Balls, but Gyro Ball would have done nothing anyway, so I think that was his best move. And I click Earth Power, which brings Stack Attack down really low, which is good, because this thing it cannot switch into um, Grassy Glide anymore. And Grassy Glide is looking pretty good, however, it does have plus one defense. Um, I should I should go Blastoise here, right? Yeah, okay, I go Blastoise here. Actually, I think Hoopa is better there. Anyway, I go Blastoise and I click Dark Pulse on the Slowcane incoming. Uh, which is good. Again, Trick Room getting up is very bad. Uh, I don't know if he has Trick Room. I think he doesn't. I make an overzealous read here because I'm stupid. I think if I just click Dark Pulse here again, I'm in a good position. I don't know why I did that. What am I reading? Oh, I guess I'm reading Klefki. That's true. I guess I'm reading Klefki because I don't want it to get screens, and any chip on it is pretty good. Um, so I go ahead and click Aura Sphere, which gives Sloking a free turn. And then I have stomach drop because I was like, man, he sets up trick room here, and but he said he just teleports, and it's okay. Uh, Heliolus comes in, and I don't have switch another for this guy. Something has to die here. I go into Thwacky on the Volt Switch, uh, just because Thwacky can kind of take on anything at this point. Um, it takes very little, actually, it takes quite a bit. Metachamp comes in here, uh, and then he's already revealed Fake Out, and so I'm like, okay, that's that's okay. Um, he fakes out. And I'm like, okay, I click Grassy Glide, and then he goes ahead and he reveals Bullet Punch, which takes out my Thwacky. And at that point, the game was over. I think if I kept this Thwacky around, I might have had a chance. Um, but him bullet, him having double priority was really good. I, I not that I didn't think it was coming, but I just overlooked it. Yeah, so I didn't think it was coming. Um, I go ahead and I'm just trying to preserve differential at this point. There's no way for me to win unless he like massively chokes all his guys away. I there's really no way to win. I need him to... Yeah, there's, it's pretty much impossible to win. I get rid of Slow King, uh, and then he just has a free into Heliolisk, and he can click Thunderbolt all he wants. No matter what here, I have to sack something. He actually just should Volt Switch. Um, I go Hard Hoopa, but he doesn't know I'm Assault Vest, I don't think, so he goes ahead and Thunderbolts, uh, and does very little percent to me. Um, I believe I Drain Punch, hoping he stays in and loses. Because uh, if he stayed in there, I think I might have had a chance, but I'm not sure. Because he has bullet. Uh, yeah, I think I might have had a chance. But yeah, um, that's pretty much the end of this game. If I also hyperspace area there, that would have been a really good. I would have been in a much better position. Uh, but I didn't. I bring in this guy. Something has to sack to Metacham. Uh, I read the drain punch correctly, but obviously he's already revealed he has bullet punch. And he might have a. He should have a psychic move. But it doesn't matter. Bullet, chip, bullet punch brings me down. And the game is just going to get cleaned by Drain Clef. Drain Clef. Clef Actually, it's going to clean my Metagem. So yeah, that is the game. This is also my first game with the TEC Vanilla account. Um, so I was thinking, man, that's kind of sus that I make a new TEC account and then I lose the game. But this was a really hard matchup for me to overcome. But yeah, GG Siok. That was a good play. Good, well played by him. He still had, he had the winning position, uh, but ultimately like you still have to convert that and he played very well throughout the whole game um and we obviously didn't play 100 percent. if we played perfectly we might have had a shot uh, but you never know you never know next up is uh lucat so um going into this game we have another problem we have the same problem in that we can't really take on plus two scallopede and we can't really take on spec specephalon those two are the two main problems against him um, against me. They're dealing with him, at least. And so, again, how do we deal with that? Well, Skolipede and Blastephalon both are taken on by a Cell Rock, Lycanroc. So, uh, Lycanroc's the first thing I put on the team. Um, defensively, he's really kind of worried about two months in particular. Um, well, obviously, Scarftini is super good against him, and then Chomp is really good against him. So he needs to bring uh, Wash or Skarm. I, I, this is the kind of team I'm calling. I call all his mons except one. 
because I thought Grid Scarf Greninja would come just because it's really good against Scarf Hoopa. It's really good against um, Plus One Chomp. It's really good against Scarf Teeny. So I thought all those were your options um, for him, especially because it gives him U turn momentum. And with me not being able to switch into too much, it can help him out a lot. Blastoise is actually pretty valuable this game as long as I can keep it at full because it's the worst one ever. Um, it needs to be at full to live any hit because it's bad. Um, what else? Regigigas is also bad. The, the problem with specs. See, I have this thing, right? I lost week two to a, a Ultra Beast. Um, I lost last week, not to the stack attacker, but stack attacker was involved. And so now I'm seeing another Ultra Beast, and I'm like, man, this is not okay. So, obviously, I pepper on that. I'm not 100% sure what I brought. Let's go ahead and look at it. Also, we have Zero Aura. And so, it, actually, I know exactly what one of the things I bring. We're going to talk about it right, right now. So, um, this is the team. So here I bring physically defensive Garchomp for oh, uh, here I bring physically defensive Garchomp for the um, Zero Aura with Quake Stone Edge Toxic Fire Blast to take on the Skarmory. Switching into Defog, or it should be his primary switch in since he kind of wants to keep Rotom healthy for potentially having to deal with the Victini. Um, and so yeah, very basic set. Toxic lets me take on the. Um, what do you call that guy, dude? The Rotom Wash. And everything else. Everything else I want to switch into Garchomp. Um, Chomp can deal with. And it gets Rocks up. Rocks are super good on this team. Against him, for one specific reason I won't get to in a couple seconds. Um, Chaton is Choice Specs, Boom Burst, Heat Wave, Air Cutter, U-Turn. He has zero switch into this. Everything on his team gets to a KO'd. By this guy. Uh, which is amazing. We're outspeeding fast Rotom. As long as Rotom isn't timid, we outspeed it. Uh, modern, modest, boom burst, heat wave, air cutter, U-turn. The only thing he can do is switch into Blacephalon, but he, Blacephalon is so good against me that if he does that and potentially chokes it, that would be really bad for him. So I, I doubt he ever does that. I doubt. I think if this thing comes, he has to sack something. Uh, next is Life Orb, Addy, Cell Rock, SD, Lycanroc. It's very good mod this game. Fire Fang after rocks, after two, plus two and rocks will two hit KO Skarmory and sweep the game. Uh, or will Oko Skarmory and sweep the game. That's 70% chance to Oko. 75% chance to Oko. Um, so obviously we want to get it in range of that before, but with rocks, it, it could be very good, especially if we're playing aggressively and not letting it roost up or anything. This set could just win after plus two. Once again, we have the Chad Mega Blastoise making its way on the team for no reason at all. Um, it's physically offensive with Aqua Jet to Oko Blastephalon after rocks. Again, rocks are very important for me. Uh, and this set is pretty good too. As much as I hate to admit it, Water's Pulse, Aura Sphere, Flip Turn, Aqua Jet. So, pretty cool set. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the rocks are important for these two. Rocks are super important for these two. Uh, next is Scarf Teeny. This outspeeds Adam and Zero Aura down. I don't think there's a reason for him to bring Jolly. If he brings Jolly, oh well. Um, zero Aura does zero damage anyway, and it won't kill me. Um, so. And then we have a uh, Wish Passing Clefable. So, pretty basic set. Out, uh, actually, I guess this set is the only one that's basic. Everything else is pretty... Actually, these two are pretty basic. Simplistic sets for the prep-wise. Um, this should be the game. Yes. Now it says, ah, no battle. Perfect. Okay, so looking at the lead matchup, I called all his mons except for Rhydon. I didn't think Rhydon would come. Just because he hates it so much and because I thought Scarf Ninja was better than Rhydon this game. And so looking at left to right, I'm kind of, I'm having a hard time thinking of his sets. I call these two sets pretty easily or pretty early on. Not easily, these two at least. Um, but ultimately, without any information, these could be whatever, right? This could be like the sub call mine thing or whatever it is. Um, so, pretty tough, pretty tough position. Uh, as far as leads go, I'm not really sure what to do. Um, Garchomp lead is good because in every mock, it was Zero Aura lead, but I don't know if Zero Aura is necessarily the best lead. Um, but I go ahead and I just lead Garchomp right away as he leads right on. I think this could have Ice Punch potentially, but I don't really care because I want to get my rocks up. 
uh, and because getting rocks up is super important. So I get rocks on Skarmory, which is fine. That was the plan. However, I think he's going to defog here or switch, uh, which is true. So yeah, I go ahead and double into Chatot because getting Chatot in is good for me. As I said, he has no switch ins. And then if he does switch in Blacephalon, rocks are up now, which puts him in range of Aqua Jet. So I'm perfectly fine with him making the balls he play and getting it right. Uh, however, he doubles into Wash, so I go ahead and U-turn out and get a little bit chip on it. Find out that that is low HP Rotom. Low HP Rotom reveals a lot about his defense. So if he's low HP Rotom, he's got to be physically defensive Skarmory, and he's got to be Spidef right on. There's no... If he is anything other than that, uh, it's not able to deal with my team as well. It should be those three. So that's his defensive core kind of figured out. He also reveals Defog on Rotom Wash, and that means that makes me assume he's also not running rocks on Skarmory. He's probably running rocks on Rhydon. And so I have, I'm kind of getting I'm piecing together some information. He runs Toxic as well, uh, but I'm, of course, Magic Guard, so it doesn't matter. I bring in Teeny here. Um, I'm not sure why I bring in Teeny here. I think I was expecting him not to stay in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was expecting him not to stay in. Uh, so I teleported out, and I brought in Teeny just to get some U-turn chip as he bolt switches out. Clefable is now down a little bit, but it doesn't really matter because Clefable is bad anyway. Blacephalon comes in here, and my safest play is to go into Blastoise because I do predict that he has overheat. Um, going to Chatot right away is the misplay. And Blastoise is now chipped down, which means it is in range of Scolipede after plus two. Or, like, I think just Life Orb Scolipede normally. Um, I go ahead and flip turn out because Wash is obvious, and getting any chip on Wash is good for Victini. So I go into Lycanroc here. Um, I can't obviously sword sense quite yet because this thing needs to be sturdy broken and needs damage. So I go ahead and CC, which would ensure the kill on Rotom and Skarmory into 60% range. I think I go hard guard champion here to try to get my rocks back up uh, because he's kind of obviously going to roost here. Um, so I go ahead and get my rocks up, which is the first priority. I believe he puts a layer of spike. No, he body presses. That's good. Um, find out info on my set. Also, uh, rough skin means that if I force him out here, I reveal flame, fire blast, force him out. Plus two, lightning rock will always um, oko with fire thing. So that's good for me. I go ahead and uh, fire blast here, so I reveal that Skarmory cannot stay in on my Garchomp. He has to respect it. Um, and now he's at really low percent, but he kind of still wants to surround, so I go ahead and make a read that he's going to go into Rotom Wash, and I throw off a Toxic, and I get the play right. Um, so, Rotom's now going to take Chip from Toxic, and then he took Chip just now from Rox. So, the lower this Rotom goes, the better for me. Um, and now he has really no CC switch in, uh, other than Blastephalon, but Blastephalon will just die to Cell Rock, and I'm not choice. Um, so, I bring Chatot in on the Defog, looking to get a kill with it, and I pick up a kill. Yeah, which is good. Uh, Chatot is in, it gets his kill. Rhydon comes out here and it threatens its own rocks. I go ahead and click Boom Burst anyway, um, just because Chatot's kind of just like an unmon. I should have gone, I mean, I don't know what I should have gone. I probably should have gone Clefable. I'm expecting this thing to have Ice Punch though. So I go um, Blastoise here, let this thing get chipped a little bit more. I don't have removal because I never bring removal. And Blacephalon, or, um, Blastoise goes ahead and Water Pulses the Scarberry. And so now I'm in a really good position, right? So uh, Blacephalon comes out here. And I believe... I know what happens here. Okay, so... Um, right now, I'm in a pretty good position here. He's revealed Overheat already. Um, so he's not going to click a Fire Move on this. I don't predict, at least. If he clicks a Fire Move on it, I know he's choiced from the damage earlier. So if he choices himself into Overheat here... Uh, and kills my Blastoise. It doesn't literally, literally doesn't matter. I go Lycanroc, Rock. I Swords Dance. I live the Overheat, and I sweep him. So we can't Overheat. Um, Fire Move also just invites in Garchomp, and him me letting him letting Garchomp in for free and get Rocks back up, or just firing off Earthquake at this point is bad for him. So I go ahead and make the read into Chatot, and I get it correct with the Shadow Ball. Uh, so he Shadow Balls, and obviously there's nothing for him to do. Um, I think I just U-turn here, or I Boom Burst. Predicting him to switch. No, I air cutter. I should have just U-turned that. It was stupid. Um, I go into Clef Clefable again. Um, since he kind of has to double into Scolipede for me to be worried about anything. And even in that case, I just... I don't know. Even in that case, I can just revenge is what I'm thinking. So, Clef comes in here on the Blacephalon. I bring in Lycanroc, which forces this out. I should have Swords Dance. If I Swords Dance right there, I won the game. I think like 89% of the time I win the game, you'll see why in a second. So uh, I go ahead and 
right on I, and i would what, what like what is six oh that's crazy so i was i right here i won turn 21. oops and let's just count the the amount of times i win the game so i win the game here uh here i win the game here if i just switch dance i cc this thing i saw everything else and they all die unless there is like really big bulk uh i kill with the sarka plus two so i kick myself there because i knew i won quote 89 percent of the time you'll see why in a second he brings that zero aura here um and zero aura i just so <laughs> this is really funny so i sack chat to zero aura playra uh and then you can't see it but lucat types in the chat wait what did he type in the chat am i did i hallucinate no no, no okay he wrote gotta kill smile and listen listen bro i don't want to be that guy okay but if you gotta if you gotta justify you gotta talk about how your how your 17 point mon killed the one point mon on a sack switch that's an unmon if that's how you're defending this mon damn gotta kill that's an unmon right there you gotta you gotta you have to make note that your zero aura killed the one point mon on a sack switch zero aura unmon uh he's obviously reveals that he's jolly i just recreate it doesn't really matter at this point um the cephalon doesn't die to anything scolipede just protects and i'm slower scolipede comes in here i sack this guy because i can't let it swords dance and here i also win the game so watch this this is crazy all right this is crazy here's my thought process so rock sweeps these two okay however however there's a couple things that could go wrong with that there are actually two okay there are two ways to approach this end game both of which could result in me winning number one i go guard chomp and i win 100 percent of the time if i go guard chomp right now at 61 percent after rocks i'll be at 61 after rocks uh i just earthquake earthquake always puts him in range of you know a cell rock uh it always puts him in range of whatever that ensures the win especially after uh chip damage if he decides not to go earthquake and if he does go earthquake i live so i live two and so that always will win me the game um there's also another way in which like rock comes in here and also wins the game however this thing could be sash this is already revealed as specs i'm thinking sash so i go ahead and go into my blastoise uh, i go in my blastoise here and i just click aqua jet so I won the game on turn 26. Um, and so here I'm thinking, okay, well, that was probably Specs. Or not probably Specs, probably Scarf. So now the Scarf's gone. Now I win the game again, turn 27. So if I go Garchomp here and I Earthquake, I also can clean with Lycanroc. And you might be thinking, well, Lycanroc just wins anyway, right? And you're wrong, because that's what I thought. And I go Lycanroc right here. And so I won the game three times. I've won this game three times over if I just wasn't an idiot. I click a cell rock and oh my gosh, Charty Berry. That's super cringe. Anyway, um, Scolipede takes you out here. It's not cringe prep. It's just cringe that I didn't notice it. I didn't think about it. And so I'm like, dang, I'm in a bad spot because he's revealed Poison Jab and I just lose. I just lost. I'm like, oh my gosh, I lose this game. That's, that's, I'm really sad about that. Um, Scolipede, uh, Earthquakes. If I had Protect on this set, or I was a little healthier, I could have lived a spec shadow ball. However, right here, 88% of the time he just wins, uh, which obviously he gets because he deserves it. If I got that roll there, it would have been ridiculous. So, uh, and he's gonna go ahead and sweep with Bocephalon. Um, so as you can see, the weakness my, this season, my weakness at least is Ultra Beast. Those guys just have my number. So yeah. Um, really bad, really, really poor performance by me. And, and you'll notice this is my problem, right? I, I don't, I, I, my prep is okay. Um, in terms of play, I seem to be able to set up end games relatively decently, and then I just choke them away. Uh, like every great Deuteragonist, there's, I just lose to myself 99% of the time. Actually, that's not true. You'll smack me, but I lose to myself quite a bit. And that's how you know TEC is scripted, people. That's just how you know it's scripted. It's not real. It's all fake. It's all in movie production. Yeah, but GG to Lucat. He picks up the win 1-0. Uh, the biggest loss, my biggest loss this season so far is 2-0, which is not bad at all. The, I, losing, having your biggest loss be 2-0 means at least in your games you're losing, you're bringing the, it close. And in my case, 
two of the games that went to I won. Uh, I had already had the wins securely in my pocket. I choked them both. Um, and so my, as you can see, my greatest weakness is myself. Um, just like, uh, what would you call it? I don't know. Like other other shows where the Deuteragonist greatest weakness is himself. Like, uh, like JGK. And then if you look at the main character of My Hero in real life, which is Mirio, his Deuteragonist also loses to himself 90% of the time. So that brings us to our final week. We are four and three. Um, and at this point, everyone's four and three. I think spots three through 11 are four and three. And so I could potentially not make playoffs if I get six owed uh, and other people do well, which is really bad. So I'm not worried about like, oh, if I lose by only what I like, whatever. Like I just have to win my next game. And if you needed further proof that TEC is scripted, I play against the Overlord himself, Pokemon Trainer Orange. Oh my gosh, I hate that I can't. Yeah, there you go. I play against Orange. Um, and now there's a lot of build-up to this game. Right? Ever since week... Ever since, bef like, the draft, or b whenever this the, the, the stupid schedule came out, this is getting pretty hyped up. I was getting hyped for it. He was getting hyped for it. And then progressively, as the weeks went through... Um, there was more and more trash talk. I, I didn't trash talk nearly as much as Orange, but Orange definitely did his fair share of trash talking. I did I did a little bit of trash talking here. I dabbled. Uh, but I also just try not to trash talk because I think it's just I, I just... I just don't find... Like, I just feel bad after I do it, you know? And so, um, this is the greatest example of not being able to switch in anything. But yeah, so basically... Did he lose to Max? No, Orange beat Max. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's it totally scripted. So I beat Max and Namdu this season. And then Orange beat Max and Namdu this season. Um, and so now it's... The, we're the two oldest Aegis last coaches. We've been here the longest. Uh, I've never made playoffs. If I win this, I, I secure playoffs. If I lose this, I hate myself. And I also potentially could make playoffs anyway. Uh, Orange, on the other hand, if he loses, he's probably getting relegated, potentially. If he wins, he won't make playoffs. So he's he's out of the race for sure. He's playing to not get relegated, and he's playing for pride. We're both playing for pride as well, too. Um, so looking at the teams, you'll notice no one can switch into anything, uh, which is a bit hilarious. So on my side, I can't really switch into Mawile, right? Like, if you look at my team, look at what can switch into Mawile, there's really not that much. Additionally, Hydreigon, can't really switch into that guy because um, he can just carry Flash Cannon. Um, Necrozma is always a problem in every universe ever. That thing can do everything. Um, Torn or Thundy after plus two is kind of annoying. And Salazzle with sub toxic, whatever, is annoying. And so, <coughs> yeah, uh, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I can't really switch into too much, especially that Mawile. That Mawile is a big problem. On his side, he also can't really switch into anything. Um, so if you look at his Hoopa switch in and his Victini switch in, he doesn't really have one. Bandit Victini 2, it kills his entire team. Um, if I make one read right, Blastoise will die or take like 85%, in which case it's just dead pretty much. Uh, Hoopa is also very good. Every set of Hoopa is always pretty much hard to switch into. Lycanroc's good against him. Um, yeah, a lot of things are good against him. A lot of things are good against me, a lot of things are good against him. It's a very offensive... We both have very offensive teams, but not a crazy amount of defensive backbone. My defensive backbone isn't as bad as his, uh, because you can see I have Clef Mega Blastoise, and he has Budget Clef and uh, Regular Blastoise. Um, so, it's it's not, my defense isn't as bad as his. His offense, I do think, is a bit stronger, though. Uh, but this is one of those games where it was kind of just one in prep, or it's kind of decided in prep, at least. Because depending on the sets that each of us bring, the prep we have to, the, the, we, our, our sets could lose. So, for example, if he brings, um, <coughs> okay, let, let's just say he, like, is really cute and he brings, like, Shell Smash Blast toys. He shouldn't, but let's just say he does. Um, the sets I need to beat that are wildly different. If he brings Sub Mawile, the sets I need to beat Sub Mawile is wildly different than, like, ST3 attacks. If you're being sub Hydra, it, you know, it's just, it, everything's different. Depending on what setup the Krozma set, I could just lose. Depending on the Thunny set, I could lose. Depending on the Mian Shao set, I could lose. So you're kind of having to call which spreads are coming for both of us. Both of us had to do this. And so, um, 
going into prep, it was pretty tough because I don't really know what he's going to do. Uh, however, this is the team I decide on bringing. Oh my gosh. I hate this. <coughs> we bring Modest, uh, Fast, Blastoise. Blastoise here at plus two speed with two Rapid Spins will be faster than his entire team. No matter what he brings, Scarfed, Blastoise will outspeed. If nothing, he has a Scarf, which he should have a Scarfer. One Rapid Spin is enough to outspeed. After things are chipped, Aorus here and Water Pulse will do enough to his whole team uh, that I will just be able to take him out. So this is an endgame sweeper, but also it's just just a good mon overall against him. Um, Hoopa here is Dark Pulse, Drain Punch, Destiny Bond, Taunt. If he gets Trick Room up, I will lose the game. If he gets Trick Room and he gets Mawile under Trick Room, I straight up will lose. I have nothing to switch in. Uh, I'll just lose the game. And so I go ahead and bring Hoopa Unbound. To try and mitigate that um, with Taunt, it's obviously going to beat all of his setters. His two setters mainly being just um, Audino and uh, what do you call that other guy? Ruta Regis. Dark Pulse and Drain Punch take those two. Uh, and it's pretty bulky to take on hits though as well. Um, Taunt obviously will stop the Trick Room and the Wish and whatever he wants to do. Dark Pulse will take on Ruta Regis. Drain Punch will take on the, the other guy, Audino. Um, next we have Magneton, um, Steel Beam, Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, Mimic, um, no item. This is here to 1v1 Mawile. If this thing is in on Mawile hard, um, just like Mawile is in on Magneton, this will always win a 1v1 from full. If he's SD Knockoff, the reason I have no item here is because Knockoff into Sucker Punch will kill me, <coughs> and plus 2 Knockoff will kill me. Without item, plus 2 Knockoff will not kill me, and Knockoff into Sucker Punch will not kill me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then we also have enough defense to live Max Addy two Sucker Punches. Steel Beam of Flash Cannon. Um, well, Steel Beam is here just in case I'm not at full, and I just need to Kamikaze and get as much damage off of that as I can. Flash Cannon is here to ensure the 2v1. Thunderbolt's here uh, just to stab for the rest of his team. I don't think Reg Runa Regis is coming, so Thunderbolt's cool. Mimic is here. I'm not sure why. I should just have Volt Switch on here, but Mimic is here for... I don't know what Mimic's here for. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Oh, I think Mimic's here. I don't know what Mimic's here for. Oh, I think Mimic might have been here just like the anti-trick room. Or I just needed a fourth move and Magneton has no move. So I just threw on Mimic and see. I wonder what will happen with this. I think I did have an intent for Mimic, but I don't know what it was. Uh, the speed here is just for Max Ma 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 Max Ma Ma. Um... <clears throat> Garchomp here is pretty interesting. So versus Bidef, leftovers Garchomp. Originally I had Assault Vest, but I hate Assault Vest. I need rocks this game. <coughs> Breaking two Prison Laws, bringing both removal and hazards, specifically rocks, which are not good. Quick Scale Shot, Stealth Rock is uh, Protect is good for me. I have enough speed to outspeed maximum speed. Wait, what? Do I have enough speed for that? I think I have enough speed for Max Hydreigon. Uh, so Def and HP is for... A uh, nice flat Thundy. Uh, Thundy's pretty good against me, especially because it has Sludge Wave. Earthquake Skill Shot Protect uh, Rocks. Um, rocks are just good against him. Um, skill Shot is for his sub potential. So he has two mons that I'm kind of worried about subbing. One of them being the Solazzle, which is annoying. And then there's another thing that I was worried about subbing. I don't know what it was. Also, I just having speed potential to outspeed high dragon scarf high dragon is really cool as well um and i just have protect to recover leftovers damage originally i had a wish teleport clef again but he had so many options to set up that it was really worrying me and so what i ended up wanting to do was a moon blast stored power soft boil psych upset potentially as well if he wanted to be some sort of variant of setup necrozza without Photon Geyser. This could come in, take a hit, psych up, copy the boost, and reverse sweep him. Um, but he has so many options for, up, for setup that Clefable stopped. That as long as I kept Clefable healthy and he tried to set up on me, uh, Clefable could always reverse it to some extent. And I was kind of worried about that. But ultimately, uh, Wish Protect was also really good. I almost had that. And next we have Victini with Cobra Berry. Uh, so as you can see here, the way I've opted to deal with Mawile is kind of hopefully don't need to swap out of it. Um, Mecha Mario can kind of take it on. Sukuna can Destiny Bond. Uh, Magneton obviously 1v1s. Garchomp has Earthquake. This thing can't take on it at all, but this is enough to switch out because Cold Berry. This thing actually lives Sucker Punch. 
like without Cobra Berry, but having Cobra Berry is really nice just in case he does have Rock Sub or something. Um, and Scorching Sands is for the the uh, Lazzle, just in case it's really annoying me and I need to get it out of the get it out of the game. My voice is like kind of running away right now, um, so. Oh, I think a friend got COVID. That's pretty Poggin. Um, right, Poggin isn't not good. So, um, yeah, that is the situation. That is the team we're rolling with. Additionally, um, I play this game not on my TEC account because I'm like convinced after losing two of those games, I'm convinced that thing's cursed. So I run my Chairman Vanilla account because <clears throat> I didn't want that at all. Um, at all at all so um, looking at the lead matchup we've ar I've already thought about this he reveals everything I kind of thought was coming the only thing that I didn't think was coming was Mian Xiao I thought Mian might not come but also if it came it wasn't surprised I thought all six of these were very likely to come as far as leads for me go I'm not really sure what to look at um, you know rocks are really good for me but rocks are always good so he might whatever he knows he can't really switch into Victini, so I'm thinking he's going to lead something that counters Victini. Um, in that instance, he would either lead he would either lead Hydra and reveal that it's potentially Scarfed. He could Big Ball with Necrozma and reveal that it's potentially defensive. He could lead with Mawile, which I'm not worried about, or he could lead with Blastoise. So he has four potential leads, or he could lead with Scarf, me, and Shell, right? So in lead matchup, he's not super worried about um, Victini. I go ahead and I lead, what did I lead? Blastoise. Yeah, I lead Blastoise. Blastoise is pretty safe for me. Uh, yeah, Blastoise is very safe for me. The only thing that beats it is Thunderous, but I don't think Thunderous is leading at all. Um, so I go ahead and I think I just fire off a Water Pulse here on that Necrozma. Since I don't want it to really set up, I just go ahead and fire off Water Pulse. He shows that this is a physically defensive Blastoise, as I predicted. So I flip turn on out, and I bring in Magneton right away. Um... Uh, why i'm not sure oh yeah why because he doesn't have a thunderbolt switch in uh also because i thought i had a bolt switch but i don't and then uh thirdly because it just stops small while from coming in and small while not coming in is like amazing because we don't want small in at all he brings in a crows but i'm just deaf on this garchomp so i just go hard garchomp he can't really touch this guy as he reveals earth power and he also reveals max special attack so i put up my rocks here uh as he I uh, honestly, actually, this right here, I predicted this entire sequence. So, <clears throat> once I saw Earth Power, I was thinking, all right, he's not set up because he doesn't have enough moves. He's probably just four attacks. And I'm thinking, like, he's obviously, because he revealed Earth Power, and the other three moves are obviously Excisor for Hoopa. But he can't outspeed Hoopa, so he probably is not Excisor. Um, but that's just what I, the media thought was. It was Dragon Move, um, Flash Cannon, and then X scissor. So he chips this Garchomp down a lot, which sucks, but because it, it, it's kind of a problem for Thunderous, but I also have a way to like heal this with Protect. So I go ahead and Protect to get myself back up to 40%, which is really good for me because now I can live any Thunderous hit. Clefable comes in here on the Dragon Pulse because I really don't have any other thing. Um, I also thought this was Wish. I thought this is still Wish, but it's not Wish, so I'm like, oh man, I'm like in trouble. I just fire off a Moonblast here and bring myself down to 40 something percent, which is bad. And I get this Bedev Shop, which is good for me. Um, however, he I think he switches out anyway here because I just click Protect. Or he just stays in and clicks it again um, on my Hoopa. And Hoopa is going to force this Necrozma out or he's going to give me the free kill. He goes ahead and he gives me the free Necrozma, which is huge. Necrozma being off the field is massive because I don't have to worry about it anymore. But he's also not set up, so it's not as much of a threat as I thought it would be. Hydra comes in here, and it takes rocks damage, so it's not boots. It shouldn't be boots anyway, but I'm not sure what set's going to be. I go into Victini predicting the U-turn. Hoopa's still kind of valuable this game. Not super valuable, but Blastoise comes in here. I think he could be Aqua Jet, but it does like 5% anyway, so I go ahead and U-turn out. I had to bring in my Hoopa again as he just rests up. And so Resto Chesto is a good bring for him. Uh, however, now that the Chesto's gone, it can't... Uh, depending on luck, he can't really wall Victini, especially because I'm not banded. I just revealed that I'm not banded. So I just go ahead and click. I should have Drain Punched here. It would have been such a big read, but I didn't. I'm, I'm weak, so I just Dark Pulse again. Uh, as I go into Magneton here. Um, so obviously, I should go into Teeny here on the U-turn, but I go into Magneton thinking he's not going to U-turn since I did that last time. 
So he makes a good play there. Uh, Mian Shao comes in here. I don't really have a switch into Mian Shao. However, I don't really want to sack this Magneton because it's still useful. Hoopa, on the other hand, isn't really doing too much. It's slower than everything and it dies to everything. So I just sack my Hoopa here on the U turn. And I put him in a position where he has to tell me what he's going to bring out, and then I can counter that. He brings in a Hydreigon, which could potentially be choice. I bring in Garchomp here, and I just protect here um, to get some leftovers recovery. He reveals a Draco Meter, which is what I expected. However, I don't know if he's choice or not. Um, either way, I go into Clefable, or I go into Magneton, thinking that, oh yeah, good play by me. I go into Magneton, um, and then he hard swaps out. So he's bluffing, he's thinking Scarf, but he brings in his Mawile here on the double. Which is good. I think he's predicting. Obviously, what he's predicting is um, me going into Clefable. However, I have no idea if this is actually choice or not. And if I go Clef here, I can just get um, Flash Cannon and I lose my Clefable. And then I'm in a really bad spot. Um, so that's a bad play if I ever go Clefable there. I go Magneton because it's way more expendable than Clefable. And also, um, Hydreigon can't super touch it. Also, what would have been hilarious is I bring this guy in. Um... On the Draco, he might just stay in and Draco again after the minus two, and then I click Mimic and I Mimic his Draco. That would have been so funny, but he uh, he U turns here. Or he just hard swaps in a while. And so that's good for me, really good for me. However, Sucker Punch will 2 a KO me. Um, and since I'm not at full, and so I just opt to Steel Beam here. As he reveals, especially defensive. Um, or at least bulky. I don't know if he has Spadef, but he's definitely bulky. Um, I can actually pull up his team, but I'm not going to show it here, just in case he doesn't want to show it. I bring in my Victini, knowing that I can revenge kill, and then he doesn't Sucker Punch. He actually doesn't have Sucker Punch later on, we find out he doesn't have it. Which I think is a choke bring, but it's also... I, I get it, I understand it. Um, which is really, really good for me, because that means that even if the Hydreigon is Specs, like Dark Pulse, um, Tini can live one and you turn out and get a lot of chip on it. Um, so, Hydra comes in here. I can't obviously stand right now, uh, so I go into Clefable as he dark as he U-turns. So I still don't know what his set is. He could be Scarf, could not be Scarf. I don't know. Uh, Thunderous comes in here. Obviously, it has Sludge Wave. So I just go hard into Garchomp and take zero percent. Garchomp putting in the finest of work here, uh, and this is good for me because I get to get my rocks up if I want to. But I opt to Scale Shot here because I don't know if that Hydra got Scarfed or not. He misses Focus Blast, but I live that anyway. Um, so I, I scale shot here. Bring him down. I hit four hits, I think. Yeah, four hits. I bring him down really low. Um, I get my speed boost, and I go ahead and fire off a second um, scale shot, but I miss. So it kind of evens out. Uh, he U turns here and brings himself down low, which is good. This thing dying is really good. Um, he brings in his Mian Shao, which could have Fake Out. It also could be Scarf. I just don't want to stay in here because I still need this uh, Garchomp, but I go ahead and protect beforehand. Um... So the fact that he brings this in here uh, reveals to me that it's 100% Scarf, and that means that this Hydra is Specs if it is choiced. Because uh, he he, there's no reason for him to bring this in. Um, unless it's, uh, like If it's not Scarf, he just loses a Mon, potentially. So I get a little bit of my HP to live the Focus Blast, um, and I bring in Clefable here on the CC. Now they know what he's going to click. Um, he obviously, he's choice locked. Uh, he should be choice locked, or he has massive balls. I, so I just go ahead and go Nobara, and I go ahead and soft both up. Thunderous comes in here, and while I would like to keep Nobara's health full, now that I know this is Scarfed, I know that I can 100% live one from full at with Blastoise, so I just need Blastoise not to get super chumped down. Uh, like it takes like 60%, 60%, like I think his max is like 69%. Um, I also can't really switch in anything here. If I switch in Garchomp, I guess I could have swapped in Garchomp here. Uh, but if he hits two Focus Blasts, or Sledge Wave into Focus Blast, I could lose my Garchomp. And Garchomp's still pretty decent this game. Especially if Hydron, since Hydra isn't Scarf anymore. Um, it shouldn't be Scarf anymore. It shouldn't run double Scarf. It should be um, Specs or... It should be slower than my Garchomp, basically. So he Sledge Waves, uh, and I fire off a Moon Blast here. Essentially making Clefable useless. However, if it actually does come in on Blasters, I can heal it back up again. Um, and because this... Me and Shao is scarfed. You just never know. I go ahead and go into Garchomp here because uh, I attacking Garchomp now is more reasonable since it has it now doesn't need to check Thunderous. However, he's he's only able to click Poison Jab. If he clicks anything else, he potentially just loses uh, to Victini. So fine read by me. Um, Blastoise comes in here on the Skill Shot again. Um, 
And I do, I think I hit it three times. Um, and I have plus one speed. Chipping Blastoise is really good here. Um, <coughs> however, I go into Clefable right away because getting Clefable healthy again is massive. As long as Clefable is healthy, I can 1v1 one of these two from full. So I go ahead and I click Soft Boiled. Um, and now Nobara is able to 1v1 one, one of these guys. Um, what do I do now? I just Moonblast. Get a little bit of chip. I, he has he's revealed that um, he could be status, but he's probably not status. He's probably a water move because he's, this is his check to Victini, so he needs to be water move. Um, Ravison comes out and he reveals faster. So at this point, he can't really get me in range of Bian Xiao. So I go ahead and Rapid Spin. Um, I rabbit spin once here. I reveal rabbit spin on my thing, and he uh, has to flip turn into uh, what do you call this thing? Mian Xiao as I or High Dragon as I rabbit spin again, which ensures that I'm faster, um, and then I fire off a um, Aura Sphere, which kills this guy. And then, as much as I hate Mega Blastoise, coming in here clean and pulling out a late game sweep here. Mian Xiao is faster because it's Scarf in close combat, but so because of Scarf, it can't kill. Um, so Water Pulse comes out, and then uh, Blastoise can't touch me, and two Aura Spheres will take it out. So, uh, Blastoise coming in clutch, cleaning the final game of the season, and clinching me playoffs. So, uh, I'm going to be entering playoffs at 5-3. and three. Where that stands in the playoff rankings, I don't know, because uh, all the games aren't done. I believe this is the first game this week. But yeah, we're going to pick up the win 4-0. GG to Orange. Um, tough season for him, but he'll bounce back next year. Or if he ever still has to play again, I think he's retiring. Um, again, trademark. Um, but yeah, that is going to be it for me in the regular season. Uh, nothing really else for me to say. Goodbye. God bless and have a great day.